Uh, let us go to our, our Lord in prayer this morning. Most holy God, we give you thanks because you are a good God. And we pray that the words of, of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts might be pleasing in your sight. O Lord, who is our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So one of the things that I like very much is being outdoors and just enjoy being in nature. It just gives me a sense of peace. One of the things that Kay likes very much is Lego. It just gives him a great sense of joy and probably even a sense of peace putting those together. He's always looking at the new Lego sets uh, that he wants to get, and I'm always looking at my budget to see uh, how much that's going to cost me. But uh, if you haven't been to the Fort Worth Botanic Gardens recently, they just started this past weekend a new exhibit called by Sean Kinney called Nature Work or uh, Nature Connects, and it uses uh, Lego bricks. And there's also here's the one that if you'll see, you might have seen this one in advertisements. So this is Cade standing next to a hummingbird. So that's all made with Lego. Even the base of it's made with Lego. It's really really cool. I encourage you to go. There's like 14 or 15 different uh, Lego creations out there. And this is uh, Cade's favorite. It is the snake. Okay. Now, don't, it looks realistic, but it's okay. It's red on black, friend of Jack. So uh, I'm not sure if it's friend of Cade, but this was Cade's uh, favorite of all the ones that we that we got to see out there at the Botanic Gardens. And so there are lots of other people out there checking out these different Lego creations. If you like Lego or if you got uh, a young one in your life that, that likes Lego, I encourage you to go check that out. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Uh, there's another exhibit that's out there that's going to be out there through the end of the year uh, by Patrick. Dougherty, I think is how you say it, and it's called stick work, and this is what it kind of looks like. It's actually, there's a much bigger thing, and so they got all the, we didn't know this was here. We just happened upon it, and it's, and it's, uh, there's lots of different little ones like this, or not, they're actually really big, and so they got things that you can stand in, and little windows, and little shelters, all made out of sticks, and vines, and limbs, and it's really, really cool. He does, uh, the artist does these, uh, they're all unique, and so he'll go to different places and set them up. And this was this really, really cool. This is by comparison what I look like in that same that same hole. Uh, and so uh, and there were lots of people out at the Botanic Gardens, right? So if you're going to talk about photos, where do people go in Fort Worth to get photos beyond besides melt and besides all the murals that we have, right? They go to the Botanic Gardens. Everyone was taking pictures out there. Some people had uh, their cameras, uh, I mean their phones just like we did. Some people had their, their big cameras and they were clo like doing close-up shots on, on, on flowers. There were all sorts of cool different flowers and trees and uh, there's, there's uh, fish and there's turtles and there's, and there's ducks. It's absolutely beautiful and plus it was, uh, there were people taking graduation photos, there are weddings happening and so there are photos all over the place, right? And last week, I wonder, you know, we talked about photos last week. I wonder how ma many of them were noticing more because of their photos and how many might have been noticing less because of their photos. I'm not, I'm not really sure. But I bet like I did, so if you follow me on Instagram, this whole series is just a, a way for me to get more followers on Instagram, by the way. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, then you saw in my stories, all these photos show up there. So I'm sharing these photos, and I bet a lot of those people who are taking photos out there as well shared at least some of their photos uh, too, right? And uh, that's because I think it's a natural thing for us to want to share our experiences with other people. You don't just want to go through your, your life alone without being able to share your experiences with anybody, and we feel that sharing it through social media or, or putting it in a frame on our wall or, or someplace in our home will allow us to share that experience with others and be able to tell that story, um, and that's beautiful. But how people react to our sharing, right, can be different, and how you react to other people's sharings can also be different. And that's sort of what we're going to talk about today. And so we're going to begin with some scripture from Romans 12, 9 through 18. And so be thinking about sharing, be thinking about community, be thinking about how you might be reacting to uh, other people's lives uh, and, and what's going on in their lives as we read the scripture uh, today. This is what it says in Romans 12, 9 through 18. Uh, join along with me as I read. Love should be shown without pretending. Hate evil and hold on to what is good. Love each other like the members of your family. Be the best at showing honor to each other. 
Don't hesitate to be enthusiastic. Be on fire in the spirit as you serve the Lord. Be happy in your hope. Stand your ground when you're in trouble and devote yourselves to prayer. Contribute to the needs of God's people and welcome strangers into your home. Bless people who harass you. Bless and don't curse them. Be happy with those who are happy and cry with those who are crying. Consider everyone as equal and don't think that you're better than anyone else. Instead, associate with people who have no status. Don't think that you're so smart. Don't pay back anyone for their evil actions with evil actions, but show respect for what everyone else believes is good. If possible, to the best of your ability, live at peace with all people. It's been a, a, a big weekend for photos, not just inside the Botanic Gardens, but also on my uh, rounds on social media this weekend. I saw uh, there were many college graduations at, at TCU. Uh, Jenny went up to Oklahoma to support uh, her friend, and so maybe you know someone who graduated uh, this past week, right? But it's also uh, Mother's Day weekend, so we got lots of people who are sharing photos of, of their moms and, and their grandmas uh, because they, they love them so much and they want people to know how much they love them. It was also the Cowtown uh, race weekend, and so I saw lots of photos of people who participating in that race on my social media. Uh, and so there were so many pictures being taken and there's so much sharing uh, going on. And we share because, partially because we are happy, because uh, we are taking part in momentous occasions, and sometimes because we are proud as well about those who, who we love and, and, and their successes, and sometimes we're also proud of our successes, and it's natural to want to share those moments with others. And I think we are designed to connect with others, so that's pretty natural to share, right? And that's really good because even that sharing... Uh, uh, can bring joy uh, to others, right? Uh, and when we are in a good place and we receive the sharing of others, whether it's some success they've had in life, some vacation they've been on, or whatever it is, when we are in a good place, if we are confident with who we are and aware of our many blessings, we can join in with the happiness of others. Like it says in, in the scripture today, like, be happy with others who are happy and cry with others who are crying. That's why we say in, in our, in our uh, uh, prayers of the Arbolon people, and we used to just say, like, uh, we, we, we have sympathy for, I wanted to change it so that we could say we grieve with, right? And, and we celebrate with. Because I want, I want the, the joys and, 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 and the sorrows of, of, of this community to not only be uh, the burden uh, of one person, but also or the or or the celebration of one person, but it should be something that we all can feel as we're connected together. If someone is grieving, we be, we should be able to feel that and be able to come around them and support and love. If someone is celebrating, we should amplify their celebration and their joy because that makes for good community. So when we're in a good place, we can join in with their happiness or we can cry with them in their sadness. We can let their joy be our joy and their grief be our grief. And their stories of triumph can give us hope for our own lives in our own stories. Or not. So remember that stick work exhibit that I showed you? I get it pulled back up here. Uh, I'll, I'll show you Cade. No one wants to see me again. So there's Cade in that stick work exhibit, right? For some reason, when I saw that, uh, I thought it was beautiful, and, and I, I thought it was really, really cool. So I, I got to enjoy it, and I shared it with you so others could enjoy it too. But for some reason, when I saw that, it reminded me of this, uh, uh, of this statue in uh, Tulum, Mexico, that I see show up on my Instagram feed all, all the time. It is called, uh, I think, Ver a la Luz, which is coming to the light. It's by a guy named Daniel Potter. He's from, I think, don't quote me on that. 
unless I'm right, then you can quote me on that. Uh, and he's from South Africa, and he had created the statue for a, a big uh, art festival they were having there, but then it became, they made it a permanent installation for a, a particular resort. And it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, obviously it's nothing actually kind of like that stick thing, but it just reminded me of it, right? And it's got all the wood and all the different, it's made out of steel and wood and and. and it just for me, it just is, is beautiful. And so you'll see someone posing in front of, of this because this is one of the most popular Instagrammable photo sites in all the world. Okay, apparently, if you don't get there early enough and you want to take a picture with this thing, apparently there is a line down the sidewalk for people who want to take pictures of this thing. And they'll wait in line for an hour just to take a picture in front of this thing and then share it with the world, right? And so I've seen this, and I see all these people who are younger than me getting to go to this cool place. And sometimes these people who are my friends get to go to this really cool place in Tulum, Mexico, and not only does that thing look cool, but also the beaches are pristine, and I see them hanging on these swing sets next to a bar, and it looks just like so much fun, and I don't get to go. But they do. What do they do in their life to deserve to get to go to Tulum, Mexico, especially when like I'm older than they are? How do they have more resources already? Okay, you can say they made better decisions, but so what? Okay, that doesn't matter. I'm upset because I want to have what they have. And all of a sudden, they're sharing their joy and their experience, and I am not mirroring any of that joy, and I'm not allowing any of their joy to enter into my life because all I have is jealousy and resentment, right? Have you ever had that experience in your own life where you see the success of somebody else or you see the experience of somebody else that is a good experience and all of a sudden you, you don't have happiness and joy in your heart, but you have like resentment and jealousy um, that it doesn't lift you up, but it, it brings you down. Today is Mother's Day, and I want to wish a happy Mother's Day to, to all that are here who, uh, who are mothers or grandmothers or those who have um, been involved in other people's lives as mothers. Can we take this picture off? I'm done with this. I just forgot to switch the slide. But I want to give thanks to all the mothers that we that we have in, in, in this room, and, all the, and we give thanks to all the mothers that have been mothers to us, us or who have mothered us in some way. Um, it's a wonderful day of celebration for, for a lot of people. But there are those in our midst who avoid social media today, right? There are those in our communities, in our community here probably even, who avoid coming to church on this day because they don't want it in their face all day about people's happy relationships with their mothers, and they don't want it in their face all day about how they enjoy being a mother so much and what a blessing that is, right? There's nothing wrong with having a great mom or, or, or being a great mom, but for those who don't have a great relationship with, with, their, with their own mother, or who didn't have a good mom, or, or, or those who, uh, who don't have a great relationship uh, with their own children, and so being, thinking about being a mom hurts, or, or have struggled so long to ha have children of their own, or who have given up on the dream of ever being a mother in the way that they thought they would be a mother, this can be a really hard day, right? And so when, when we share, even though you're sharing your joys, don't get upset if other people rec don't receive that in the same way. We need to be sensitive to that. That's just one way that when we share and we have one attention, it doesn't always come across. We need to be sensitive to that. And we also need to be sensitive to, to those in our lives who, who don't respond with joy, right? But for us, for those of who can hear this message today, and, and hopefully for all, um, 
the truth is that sometimes we can't help but compare our reality with the perceived reality of others. We can't help but compare our experience, their experiences, with our own experiences, and, and, and their successes with our own successes. And we, and we wonder if we measure up, and, and, and we wonder if, if our experiences measure up, and we wonder if, if, if we have gotten a fair shake. We compare our lives to those of others, and we let that comparison steal our joy instead of bringing us joy. And others sometimes are doing that when they look at your life. And when we allow ourselves to be focused on the successes of others through comparison, we are blinded to our own joy in our own lives. We are blinded to the ways that we are blessed in our own lives. But the truth of the matter is that we all have been blessed by God. Every single one of us. And we all have opportunities for joy in our lives. And when, when we are secure in that knowledge that we have been blessed by God, that we have opportunities for joy, and when we are secure in our own lives to believe that God has been good to us and that we have all that we need, then we can once again allow others' joy to be our joy. To let others' happiness be our happiness as well. But we first have to believe the good news that God is for us, that God has already blessed us, that God continually wants to give us good things, and God is continually providing us opportunities to be happy and to find joy in our lives and to appreciate our blessings. And once you believe that you are truly blessed, once you believe that God is for you, then you can begin to share in the joy and happiness of others. So the message today is not stop sharing your life with one another. But to also but be sensitive to those who receive it and also to experience the sharing of others as you want people to experience yours. So that your life can truly be more joyful because of other people's joy. And that your life can be more blessed because you have been blessed by other people's blessings. Amen. We now come to our time of, of communion, where Jesus sat around a table with, with his friends and, and broke bread and, 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 and drank from the cup. And they had their own troubles, these friends, with comparing their lives to one another and trying to get above one another and, and thinking the other was, was trying to out to, to get them and somehow that God favored them more. But each time Jesus would come back and say, no one is better than the other, and that my love for you is significant. Don't let this steal your joy, this comparison. Instead, live like Jesus lived. So he took, a, he took the, the bread, and he gave thanks over it, and he blessed it, and then he broke it, and he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Whenever you eat this, I want you to remember me and the life that I lived. Then he took the cup, gave thanks over it, and blessed it, and said, This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, I want you to remember me and the life that I lived. And so we do that today. We pray that these items might become for us the body and blood of Christ, so that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Amen. As we approach the table today, we do not want to do so with proud hearts, but with humble spirits, so that God may be able to work in our lives in a way that helps us become who God created us to be. One way we do that is through a prayer confession, and I invite you to pray that prayer of confession with me now as we pray together. God of love and grace, our jealousy and resentment has kept us from celebrating with others in their success. We compare ourselves to others and find that our lives are lacking. Focus on others. We forget to appreciate and enjoy what you have provided for us. 
forgive us. As we join our sisters and brothers at your table today, we remember your great love for each and every one of us. You do not hold yourself back, back from us. As we leave your table today, we take your grace and love with us. Let us not hold ourselves back from loving one another and the world. Lord, in your mercy, amen. Uh, this table does not belong to, to Arbolon. This table does not belong to Rooted. It does not belong to the United Methodist Church. This table belongs to God. And that means that all who are seeking a relationship with God are welcome at this table, regardless of who you are and, and where you're from or what you've done. If you're seeking a relationship, if you simply want to experience the grace of God this morning, you're welcome at this table. For those who are in person, you have your cups with you. It has a thin cellophane layer that you can access your wafer and a thicker layer that le gets you access to the juice. Uh, for those of you at home, I hope that you have bread and juice or some other substitutes available to you this morning. And if you're with another person, you might share that bread and that juice with them and say, this is the body of Christ broken for you, and this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Or you might simply say, Jesus loves you. If you happen to be uh, without anybody else physically with you, know that you are not truly alone, but that you are in the presence of God's people. You're in the presence of God. We are all connected through the spirit and love of Christ and that you are deeply loved this morning. And we're so thankful that you have decided to spend worship with us. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. 